Aha. Good evening. I'm glad to see you gathered around. It's not going to be one of those acts. I'm just very tired. I've spent a lot of time on the road, particularly the last road. And tonight I'll tell you the tale of the last road. You see, there wasn't always a last road. No, it, it came before, long ago in the before times, before anyone alive today, before the building of the Wilds Wall, before the building of the Unbroken Spire, even before anyone had heard the voice of the Undying King. You see, it was some time after the emptiness left by the Great Purge. Thousands had died and hundreds more were dying every day and it was found that the purge was incubated in the bodies of the dead. The graveyards had long since been filled and the skies were choked with ash from those corpses that had been burned. And so they did the only thing they could. They took the bodies away. They went south until they could go no further. They crossed thousands of miles of rolling hills and grass and thousands more miles of relentless heat and sand. They eventually came to the unnamed mountains. There was no lantern of the way to guide them, nor wayfinders to protect their passage. Eventually they reached the ending coast, and there they built the necropolis of their a city of the dead, where the last rites of any people could be found and practiced. Eventually, with time, towns sprang up along the last road, initially just to provide supplies and a place to rest for those who guided the bodies of the fallen to their last resting place. But eventually the towns themselves became destinations. And as with any road, the last road, the road that we all travel in the end, was fraught with dangers. Of course, there were animals, but the most dangerous animals were those that walked on two legs. I was one of those at one time. I had fallen in with a band of highwaymen. There were 12 of us, and I had shown myself capable with a bow, capable enough to guard the camp at night, but I had yet to make a name for myself. I meant to do anything I could to gain respect among these, these cutthroats and cut purses. So, one night I snuck out, left the camp unguarded, and went into the woods to see if I could find a, a passing merchant, and there I saw a caravan traveling slowly and deliberately, slightly guarded. I was confused at first, but the light was low and I couldn't quite see. So, as the dawn broke, I spread the news, and an ambush was planned. I was to scout the path, and when I gave the signal, we would all stand and unsheath our weapons and charge. So as the wagons rounded the, the path, I stood, I gave out a cry, I knocked my bow, but before I could loose it, our leader struck my arm, and the arrow went wild. I was confused, and in my bloodlust, drew my blade, began charging down the hill to finish what I had started until I heard a cry to stop. I turned, and there was our leader. He began walking down the hill, and then broke into a run, not with anger, but with purpose. As he approached the wagon train, he held up his hands as if to indicate he meant no harm and walked up to the driver of the wagon, now screaming in agony as my arrow had pierced his leg and pinned it to the bench. Our leader broke the arrow in half and pulled the rest of it through his leg, tore the sleeve from his tunic and wrapped it as a bandage. And when he saw that the driver was in no shape to continue his journey, he took up the reins and spurred the horses onward. It was only as I watched in silence that I realized that this was no passing caravan of merchants. This was a black train. Inside these wagons would, were not riches, but instead the men and women who had fallen. 
they had given up any claim to earthly riches long ago. And now all that was left of them was their journey along the last road. I knew at that moment I had to leave because if I stayed, I would not survive the night because even among thieves and murderers, the passage of the black train, the passage of the dead along the last road is sacred. And if I did not make my exit, I would find myself among the dead, but I would make no journey to the necropolis. I would have no last rites. And so I ran. I ran as fast and as far as I could until no one would know my face. I sold my weapons. I gave up what little name I had and I bought passage to the walled city. I knew, I knew that whatever I would find there in the slums would be hell, but it was certain to be preferable to whatever would await me come nightfall. Because to assault a black train, that is a crime for which the punishment is so much worse than death.